not free. Now, what I want you to note is that the relative clause has that's the adjective clause. As basically one function as an adjective, it has basically one function, and that function is as an adjective. So the only thing you do is that you begin to tell us the noun or pronoun it is qualifying or describing. That is what you need to tell us. You won't think of whatever. I, so once you see a relative clause, you are able to identify a relative clause. Don't tell us it's functioning as a subject, as an object, as a complement. No, it doesn't do that. It won't do that. That is why it's an adjective clause. An adjective describes a noun or a pronoun. So remember this point, that an adjective clause cannot function as a subject, an object, or even a complement. Once you identify it as an adjective, begin to look for the noun or pronoun it describes. That is what you do. It's unlike the noun clause that usually functions in a number of ways. That can give you a little bit more problems. If the noun clause will either function as a subject, as an object, as a complement, or as an apostate and possibly one or two other functions that may be exoteric. So the point here is that you don't need to get yourself confused about the adjective clause. It functions basically one way as an adjective. That also is the case for the noun phrase and the adjective phrase. An adjective phrase does basically one function. That is, it describes a noun or a pronoun. Why a noun phrase will have a number of functions as a subject, as an object, as a complement, as the completive element in a prepositional phrase, as an apostate. So you want to remember that this note 3, it covers both the adjective clause and the adjective phrase. Don't get yourself confused about what it is or about, particularly about this function.